Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and I'd like to invite and uh, welcome our uh, two special guests. First, I have Allison Babin, and Allison is the Executive Director of the Beverly Public Library. And I have Katie Nelson, who's the Director of Teen Services, correct? Correct, yes. All right, well, welcome, ladies. Thanks, Thank you Bob. for having us. Yeah. And um, just so the folks uh, have a better idea of, of who, you, who you are and how long you've been around, tell us, you, you've just taken over as executive director, right? How long have you been the ED now of the, of the library? Sure. So I've been the director of the library since April 2020. Okay. Which I'll let that sink in, what, <laughs> what that time you, was you, like. You really right? took over a great time, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, it was um, a very unique experience. Yeah. Um, but I've been with the library for about 12 years total. I started in 2011. Okay. And I actually had Katie's job um, when okay. I first started out, and I was the head of teen services for about five years. Then I was the assistant director, and now serving as the director. Yeah. And you took over for? Anna Langstaff. Yeah, Anna. Yeah. Sure, she was a... Uh... We, we know Anna very well. Yes, and she was uh, a wonderful director, yeah. a wonderful role model. I learned so much from her. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Katie, tell us about your history with the library. Um, I actually started at the library when I was in high school. I was a um, what we call a page, which is someone who works in the circulation department. And I did that um, through high school and a little bit of college. And then um, in 2013, I was hired as the assistant um, the circulation assistant, a senior, li senior library assistant, okay. and then um, did that for about five years and was assistant communications librarian for a couple more years. And in December of 2020, I was hired as the head of teen services. All right, and that brings us right into the topic of discussion <laughs> today. And I'm going to ask uh, our camera person, uh, this, I saw this article in the, in the Salem News, uh, and if... Uh, Kim Kinzer, it says, for teens by teens. And there's a, a photo of, who's the lady doing the ribbon cutting there? Um, Do you remember? Sorry, that's Keeley. Keeley is the head of, is the president of our teen advisory board. President of the teen advisory board. So when I saw that, that article, that prompted me to get in, uh, in touch with you, Allison, and say, gee, this, is a, this would be an interesting topic for, uh, for a show. And, um, and what you did is you created a teen room. And in August, when this article ran, it was the grand opening of this teen room. So, so uh, tell us, what, what was this all about? How did this get its impetus? What, 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 what helped you create this teen room? Tell us the thinking behind it. Sure. So um, we saw really tremendous growth in our teen department from 2011 to about 2016. We saw the attendance at teen programs go from five to 600 teens participating a year to closer to 1,200 teens a year. We also saw tremendous growth in the circulation of the teen book collection. Okay. So we saw the books going out by about an increase of 40%. So we saw this tremendous engagement and we thought, what do these teens need for this to, to keep going, keep building? Um, what more can we do for the teens in our community? And we had formed a teen advisory board at that time, so a group of teens that would work with the teen librarian to talk about what was really important to them. They would help pick out books and plan programs and things, and they were really passionate that the space could use a revamp. Um, as you probably know, that space hadn't been updated for about 30 years. Okay. Um, to some in Beverly, the renovation may seem fairly recent, <laughs> <laughs> but it was actually 1993. So we had that very 90s color scheme of peach and pink brown, and brown <laughs> um, old carpeting from the 90s. And um, there also wasn't a lot of space for them to study together, collaborate, hang out, do fun activities. So we really started thinking, what can we do? And um, with Anna Langstaff, we decided to update the room and, and renovate the whole thing. And um, so that kicked off in 2017. Yeah. Now, the Teen Advisory Board, had this just been started, inaugurated, or was this Teen Advisory Board around for a long time? Yeah, we started it in, it would have been 2011 or 2012. Okay. Um, the library may have had one years 
prior. Um, it is a recommended thing for a teen department to have. Yeah. But we really built it up around that time. Yeah. Now, when you say that that uh, the usage, I uh, forget the exact term, but you said it went from 500 to 600 to almost double that. Is yeah. that how, uh, uh, and that number represents people that did what, or how do you count them? How yeah. You... So we count uh, the individual number of people that attend each program. Okay. So if we do a book discussion group, we count 12 people attended this book discussion group or okay. things like that. And we started to see those numbers rise exponentially. We did some really um, unique and creative things. We had a murder mystery party, which Katie just ran one recently. Oh. That is a beloved activity Huge by program. teens. Yeah. <laughs> and so offering things that really appealed to them and got them you know, interested in reading and different activities that the library we just saw those numbers right. continue to grow. Now, do you keep track? I, I have a, a, a I have a Beverly Library card, and yeah. I, I check out books a lot. Now, do you uh, can you tell the age group of people who check out books, or is that transparent, or do, do you see that? Is that can um, you like sort by that or not? So it may be possible to do that, but the numbers that I was talking about so, earlier, yeah. I was talking about. Um, the collection that got oh, checked okay. out, all right, so okay. the teen book collection. Okay, all right. So yeah, we're more focused on that. All right, so yeah. so it's not the number of teens that were in the general library population that were checking out books. That doesn't represent that number, right? Well, I think it does. No. I think I think it correlates pretty it closely. Correlate. Yeah, there are some adults that read teen books. Certainly, I mean, I did for many years, and Katie <laughs> does. You know, there's some <laughs> wonderful teen books out there. But I would say the majority of teen books that are circulating are yeah. being checked out by teens. Now, tell us about the Teen Advisory Board. Now, that's probably your, under your purview, uh, right, Katie? Yes. And so tell them, what is their mission? What, what do they do? How do they help the library? Um, the Teen Advisory Board is a group of, um, depending on the year and the season, um, like 12 teens that volunteer their time to uh, share what they think is important at the library, what we think should be doing programming wise what they like to use the library for um and also you know what books we should consider purchasing and um that we meet monthly and they're fantastic i love meeting with the teen advisory board because they're always so enthusiastic and excited about yeah. events and what we can do at the library and, and also sometimes surprised at what we can do at the library <laughs> <laughs> um, now are these people uh, are they primarily high school students from the high school here, or are they are they farther afield than, than that? They're um, almost all Beverly residents or Beverly students, okay. um, and they are from grades 6 through 12. At this moment, we have quite a heavy roster of juniors <laughs> on the uh -huh. board, so in a couple of years, I'm going to be like, where is everyone? Um, but so it kind of, they grow into the position. Yeah. Now, do you actually recruit them? How do they know that they can be part of this teen advisory <laughs> A lot of them, um, so we did have some signs up for a little while, and then some people found the signs, and then they came and um, brought their friends along. And, and it seems that people that are enthusiastic about books find out about the Teen Advisory Board. If, say, someone's coming in a lot and I see them frequently and they're coming to a lot of programs, I might say, hey, did you know we have this and you can help um, enhance what we are offering here at the library? Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it can be very organic. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, so tell us about you. You you went through some fundraising efforts. So tell us what did you need the money? What were you going to do? This is the old space, and now you want to turn it into a new space. What what had to be done, and how, how did you go about with your fundraising efforts? Sure. So um, the friends really were the key players when it came to fundraising. Okay, let's talk. Okay, so now that you're my friends, so t tell yeah. us about, let's just back up a little. Sure. Tell us about the friends of the, of the Be Beverly Public Library, because I know someone who was on that uh, uh, group a number of years ago. Sure. Tell us what they do and who they are. Yeah, I would love to. So uh, the entire Friends membership is made up of around 250 people, and those are paying members who are just interested in supporting the library. So much of what we do um, is made possible by the Friends. Yeah. So they fund almost all of our programs, they fund our Museum Pass program, which is also very popular, and they funded this entire renovation project. Mm -hmm. 
Now, don't they also run the, the book sale that you do a couple they times? They do. Because I've yeah. volunteered for that many, <laughs> many times. Right. I know you have, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so their book sale is their biggest annual fundraiser. Yeah. They run two to three major book sales a year. We actually have one coming up in November. Um, I have the dates here, and I didn't well, want to get them well, I'll wrong. be there. I'll be volunteering for <laughs> November sure. November 18th through the 20th, and there's a preview night on Thursday, November 17th, which is for members. So it's a great time to join if you haven't already. Yeah, very good. So, all right, so we, we talked about that. So let's go back to the question about what, what were you going to do to change the space, and, and what how were you going to spend the money, and, sure. and tell us about the fundraising you did. Yeah, so we wanted to, first and foremost, expand the space. As I mentioned before, it was really cramped and crowded. So how we did that was we relocated the bookshelves that used to be in the center of the room to the other side of the teen office. That essentially doubled their space. And now we had all this open space in the center where we could put more tables and furniture. And we went with some really kind of unique choices, which I think we'll show on the screen well, in a I little think, bit. Well, I, I think we will. Well, as yeah. long as you brought it up, yeah. I think I'm going to ask our control room, uh, Matt in the control room, to we have some images that we're going to go uh, through. And you can talk to these images and tell our viewers what we're, what we're looking at here. Matt, if you could run image number one. Okay, so what are we looking at now? This is before, is that right? That's correct. So this is the old space. As you can see, there are only two tables here. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really all the space the teens had for studying or working on projects together. And then there were all those bookcases behind. Okay, let's see the next image. And what are we looking at here? So that's a different view of basically the same space. You can see the two tables up against the teen librarian's office where Katie works now. Okay. And this is on the second floor of the, of the library, That's right? correct. Yeah. So when you come up the Winter Street stairwell, it's right to the left. Right to the left, right. Okay. And let's take a look at the next image. So what are we looking at here? Who are these folks? Yeah. So <laughs> this is our wonderful, amazing Friends of the Library board. These are the folks who really organize all of the fundraising efforts and make keep it all working. Uh, one person I would really like to point out here is Andrea Connor. Andrea was absolutely instrumental in the whole fundraising process for the teen renovation. She oversaw our miniature golf fundraiser, which was one of the biggest events that we had. Um, and here they are, standing in the old and space. And which one is she? Can you like, go from left to right and count, um, she count them? She is the fourth one in from the left. From the left, with the blue kind of Yeah, uh, yeah, that's Andrea. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Very good. And, and all these folks are the are the are from the Friends of the Beverly Public Library? That's correct. This was the board at the time. We've had just a little bit of change in leadership over the past couple of years, but everyone has stayed involved and so this was really the key group right. um, and now Kevin O'Reilly who's who's uh, I, I have to say that that we're uh, Ellison is with me in the <laughs> Beverly Rotary Club and and Kevin O'Reilly who now tell us Kevin's role uh, he's in the board sure. of directors of the yes Kevin is the chair of the board of library of trustees, of the, oh, trustees yeah of the, so of he library. was also very supportive of the project right um, which we so All appreciate right. so let's look at the next image Matt if you would yeah, so this is a fun photo. It looks um, like a miniature golf. Is that yeah, what's happening here? Yeah, we, um, for one weekend in 2017, we turned the library into a miniature golf course. And that was a fundraiser for the teen renovation. And so here you can see a few members of the then teen advisory board playing a hole in the uh, bench area of the teen room. So the people could what buy, uh, they, they paid to play? And yeah, they paid to play. <laughs> um, it was a two-day fundraiser. On Saturday night, uh, it was for adults, and uh -huh. we turned the circulation desk into a bar. <laughs> and <laughs> folks could come and have a couple drinks and play a round of golf. And then on uh -huh. Sunday, we had a family day. Which is what this photo is yeah. from. I, I don't see. The, I don't see the windmill hole. Did you have, a, did you have <laughs> every every miniature golf course has yeah. to have a windmill? I don't hole. know. There might have been one somewhere. In there. <laughs> All right, Matt. Next photo, please. Okay, and uh, the, um, and we recognize the lady on the left. She's yeah. the li a librarian here from from Beverly High School. Barfecto Bar and Bar Dave Greenberg on the right. Yeah. they served as our bartenders for the evening of the um, adult party, yeah. as we called it. Yeah, Barb looks like she's having fun there. <laughs> yeah, she's always having fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we love Barb. She's she's terrific. Yeah, and the next shot. Okay, and this is uh, 
looks like some kind of uh, goodies there, so a table full of... Uh... Yeah, so this is Eliza Michaels. She was on our teen advisory board at the time, and the teen advisory board took it upon themselves to run a few bake sales, and so they would sell baked goods in the lobby uh, to help raise additional money for the project. Yeah, and now I think we're going to see some after photo. No, this is during, I guess. <laughs> this, is during. this doesn't lie. I hope this is an <laughs> after. So tell, tell us, what, what all did you do? What, are there some painting going yeah, on? What there, else would happen? We completely repa repainted the space and recarpeted. So this would have been uh, preparation for the paint. So we moved the bookshelves out first. So by the point of this picture, they had already been put on the other side of that office to the right. Um, and then they came in and uh, totally repainted it. We went with a color scheme that I'm very pleased with because I think it's very modern and fresh and appealing to teens, but it's not jarring or out of place with the rest of the library. We wanted to make sure the space flowed so that folks wouldn't walk in and see, you know, a garish green or, so, you know, some <laughs> neon colors or something crazy that didn't work with our beautiful building. Psychedelic. Well, so w was the was the um, uh, the budget for this in your regular budget or was all of this uh, funded by fundraising? It effort? was all completely funded by fundraising. Oh, uh, yeah. excellent, excellent. Okay. Were you going to say something, Katie? That, uh, oh, I was just going to say that we also were looking for timeless, too, so that it kind of didn't yeah. get dated in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, and uh, now uh, we might add for our viewers, uh, this this started um, before COVID or just as COVID hit? It did start before COVID. So, so that photo we just looked at of the painting, that was being done in, I believe, October of 2019. Oh. So before COVID, but not long before. Not long, but like about three months, is <laughs> yeah. four months maybe. Yeah, little uh, did we know. Yeah. So, so how, how did that impact uh, the, the progress of the project? Yeah, so we finished the painting and the carpeting before COVID, which was good. Um, but then COVID happened, and the library went through a difficult time, as everyone did. Um, and we kind of put a pause on obtaining the new furniture. Yeah. Um, a lot of work went into picking it out. Actually, our current assistant director, Megan Carrison, was the teen librarian at the time. And she did a lot of work to select the furniture and work with the teen advisory board to make sure they were pieces they liked and that would work in the building. Um, and we kind of had all that ready, and we kind of just waited to see what would happen yeah, for a little yeah. while. And I think the last uh, two images we have, Matt, if you could, this is the finished product, I think. Uh, Let's see the next one. Okay, so this is this is <laughs> looks like it's uh, uh, the ribbon. Yes. Uh, this, this is the ribbon that we saw at the, the, when I in the newspaper that was being cut into the <laughs> teen room. And I think we have one more image. Do we not? Uh, so and tell us this looks like your teen board here. Uh, tell us who these folks are. Yeah. So one of the things when I asked them what they wanted to do for the grand opening, they were very very excited about a ribbon cutting. Um, so we've got the giant scissors, and then this is past and current members of our teen advisory board, and it's not everyone, um, but it is a, a nice mixture of different students and former students that are part of the, the whole project. And yeah. kind of. And, and I understand that you even had a student violinist we that, did. that performed. <laughs> Tell us about that. Um, so I emailed the... Um, I emailed the schools and said, do you have a student that you would recommend? Because we wanted music that was um, student performed because the whole space is teen, yeah. teen focused. So, um, so yes, yeah, so we had a violinist oh, come in and uh, play. Is there, is there another image, Matt, the last one? Or is that the, uh, okay, and then this is the, this is the new space. So, so we're looking at, uh, Tell us what we're looking at here. This is the revised space, correct? So this is um, the when you come around the corner and sort of enter the space. That's the the teen librarian's office. So if anyone's looking for me, that's probably where you'll find me. And then behind that is the teen space. So you can see a little peek of some of the furniture we did spend a lot. Oh, oh here's a, a picture with uh, there, more. That's <laughs> the one I, yeah, I knew this one was there. Yeah, this is the one I was looking yeah, for. Yeah, okay. so um, we went with a very bold couch and and some really comfortable um, yeah. chairs. Yeah, those, those chairs look so comfy, don't they? They are, <laughs> and they, were, they kind of 
they, what they do is they move a little bit. They're on gliders, and oh, so you can it. actually you just like <laughs> quite, lean quite far back. But one uh, of the focuses with the furniture was that we wanted it multifunctional, so it's easy to move. There are ottomans that they can move. They can use them as tables. They can use them as seats. I don't know if you can see in this picture in the back by the window, there's a tall cafe table. Um, all of the chairs, except the tall chairs. The, oh, I see it there by the window. Yeah, yeah, so there's a nice tall cafe table that's in yeah. high demand. Um, and then there's rolling chairs that they can move around if they want to work in groups or together or alone. We have computer tables. We have um, just tables that they can use. Uh, so the whole point of it was to make it flexible and comfortable and yeah. welcoming. Yeah, it, it, it certainly does all that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's another image, uh, a little bit wider shot there of, the, of what you were, were talking about. It does, look, it does look inviting. It looks very, doesn't look library-ish, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Except for all the books. <laughs> Except, now, now uh, uh, tell us again, what, what, what were the, the, you know, the goals of the project? And it's only been, what, uh, September, October, November, maybe three months that this has been open. Since it, is it too early to tell what impact it has, or have you gotten any, uh, any data that you can share with us as to... Yeah. Have you met your goals? or what? I, I think we have met our goals. I think the, the space is completely updated and refreshed and looks more modern and approachable to teens. We should add, too, we added more outlets, which was really important. Um, mean electrical the, outlets? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the room had very few outlets before, and that oh, okay. just doesn't work in today's world. Kids need yeah, to be able kids, to plug in their, their oh, yeah, of computers and their phones and things like that. So yeah. we definitely see much more usage of the room. Yeah. Yeah, anecdotally, anecdotally, I do see a lot of teens in there. It um, is a little hard to estimate stats because I started during the pandemic. So right. I, when I was in there for a lot of the time, we weren't, um, you know, allowing people to, you know, people had to make appointments or different things like that. So there were different restrictions at the time. Um, but every time a teen comes in the room, I get very excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I love to see the different ways they use the space, whether it's group study or on their own. Um, and it's really nice to have that space now that they feel welcome yeah, at the library. Yeah. Now, are, 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 are you aware of other libraries that have similar spaces or similarly organized space for, for teen uh, readers and te uh, teen patrons? Yeah, uh, it's definitely the trend. Yeah. Or um, I wouldn't even say it's a trend. Yeah. It, it's an important facet of what you offer. Yeah. Teens are obviously a big part of our population and they deserve to have their own space just like children and adults. Yeah. And I we were talking a little bit before we went on the air, Allison, and I, I was mentioning that um, since the advent of, you know, large scale usage of the internet, which kind of started in the 90s, uh, and that, that kind of um, uh, drew people in my you know away from reading because everybody w uh, could could get any kind of information they want. In fact, I think I relate the story. My daughter, when she was in college, was talking to me about an assignment she had, and I said, "Well, why don't you just consult your textbook?" And she says, "I didn't even buy the textbook for the course." <laughs> I said, "Well, what do you do? How do you?" She says, "Well, I just look it up on the internet." So uh, I, I was just wondering uh, uh, if, if you could comment, Allison, on has has the internet has the last couple of decades. How how has that affected the younger patrons, the younger uh, using the library and going into a library and reading books as opposed to being online? Sure. It's a huge question. Yeah. It could probably be the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the library is still used tremendously. So last year alone, we had over 138,000 visits to the library. And thinking about our circulation statistics, um, Almost half is children's books. So we have so much engagement, families with children reading books. And it is still print books, and it's ebooks too, and we offer both through the library. Yes, I think a lot of the ways that people engage with information and look up information has changed. Google's my first step usually too. Mine too. <laughs> but when I want something really authoritative and I want to be sure that it's factual because it's something important, I know I have to dig deeper for more reliable sources. Yeah. And the library offers a lot of things like that. I don't know if all the viewers know, but one thing you can get through the library is free access to the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. 
online at home through the library. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you have to go through the library. You to do. do and we have a new website, actually. We, re we revamped our website uh, just a few months ago. Yeah. And so the website is a lot easier to navigate and use, and it should be really easy to find those and resources. And uh, uh, say, I don't think we have it up, but to say, say sure. what, it's, it's a www.beverlypubliclibrary.org. Beverly Be Beverlypubliclibrary.org. Yeah. Now, uh, you, you just mentioned, and earlier on you mentioned some of the programs that you mm -hmm. have for for teens so tell us about some of the current offerings and maybe some what you're what you might be thinking about doing in the future to to rope in these teen, <laughs> teens to be to go to the library and, and some of the projects you're working on absolutely so I have a couple of um, regular reoccurring programs including our graphic novel club which meets for grades six through eight and then um, we have a creative writing club that all these meet monthly so we have a creative writing club for grades five to eight um, and then we do downtown cleanup and crafternoon so these are kind of regular regularly recurring programs um, and a lot of them are you know to encourage people to go read or get out of the house do something fun do something creative um, and that's kind of the the thought that I take into all my programming is is creativity and expression and getting out of the house and doing something different and fun um, and then we do also have more one-off programs um, one of the things that I'm working on is a series with Be Healthy Beverly of programming around teen mental health and that's called Let's Talk and we've been partnering on that and doing some really great programming for that we also have a um, annual and it's gonna be the 27th annual teen poetry contest um, coming up this year uh, which is for grades 6 through 12, and they can enter in poetry. Last year we had over 400 submissions. Wow. Um, so they enter poems, and they're judged by a panel of published local authors. Um, and we've had a, a variety of those in the and, past. And when, when is the deadline for that? <clears throat> that usually opens up in July. In, I'm sorry. It usually opens up in January. Okay. And... Um, closes in March. I don't have these specific dates for this but year's coming up. if they go up. onto the website, we'll have the website, they can navigate through yep. to where they could uh, they can do that. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit early for me to have the stuff on the website. I'll probably have it in about a month. Okay. It'll be all up on the website um, and they can, every all the details are there. I'm also very easy to find or email or, or call if you have any, if anyone has any questions. Okay. Um, but there's a cash prize, which I think is very exciting, and then there's also the excitement of being <laughs> a winner yeah. of the poetry contest. Yeah. Um, and there's two different, two different age groups. There's middle school and high school, so the middle yeah. schoolers aren't competing. Now, that, now, do, are we still doing the improbable places poetry uh, uh, slams? Do, are, do you know what I'm talking about? I do you know what you're talking about? That was um, about with Colleen Michaels. Yeah, that's right. Who. I because don't know had, if she's still doing those. them. Well, Bevcam uh, uh, was there taping those for quite a while, but then I, the last few years I haven't, uh, I haven't heard of that. But anyway, now you mentioned graphic novel club. Mm -hmm. now tell what, what, tell, what is a graphic or what is that about? So there's different. Um, most people kind of would have ref heard it referred to as like comics. There's ah, there, it's a okay. different medium of um, book, and it's. There's a lot of a huge variety of different graphic novels. Um, some are serialized, some are, you know, your comics like Superman or um, Spider Man. Uh -huh. But then there's also more one offs. There's some that get yeah. deeper into it. Um, and it's a really great medium for encouraging um, people, you know, teens to read something that they might not be used to, but also a different way of reading if you're not comfortable with a yeah. uh, traditional book. Yeah, it made me think of Dracula, Bram Stoker. That's when I <laughs> <laughs> immediately, uh, immediately thought of. Well, this has been this has been uh, a lot of fun, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, I want to thank my guests uh, today, uh, Allison Babin, the executive director of the Beverly Public Library, and Katie Nelson, who's the head of Teen Services, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you all. Uh, thank you for having us. Yeah, I'd like to remind our viewers that you've been watching North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we'll see you next time.